to see. Courageous. Uh, there's got to be a song about courageous imagination. Courageous imagination. 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 La, 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 la. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you in Doozy Live land. Welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And welcome to Doozy Live Courageous imagination. We're so glad mm. you joined us live and those of you who have joined us by replay. So happy to have you with us. This is going to be an amazing day. We've got some interviews. We've got some, some interaction with you, our audience. And oh, We've and I have my, my microphones going, <laughs> are going a little crazy here this morning. So we are glad you are here. The theme is courageous imagination. We love this this theme. Actually, it is our theme for this year 2020. It's the one that we chose courageous imagination. Oh. Matter of fact, it is it is such a a driving force in our life right now that even our MTO theme, every year we write one theme about some something and this year it is courageous imagination. Because we're living it the whole year. Well, I, I think it, it's very prophetic as well, because as we move through this time of unknown in our world, it, it is like I, I keep picturing Joshua with the children of Israel ready to cross in the promised land. And here is this, here is this Jordan River at flood stage. And it's like we we can't go <laughs> forward. We can't go forward. And but we must, we must go forward. And it's going to take courageous imagination to move across that river into the promised land. And I think this is something we all need to grow in right now, especially in our world and in our neighborhoods. What's going on? We need to be people of courage. We need to be people of imagination. Thank you for signing in. James Thomas is in the house. I really appreciate that. Those of you who are here, if you don't mind, put your, just put a note. Hi, hello, I'm here and tell us where you're coming from so we can just address you personally. Also want to make sure that our volume is good. So if someone just lets us know, I've adjusted Sound the volume, volume a little bit. In the past, people have said it was too loud. So I've done some adjustments. Too soft. To, no, it was too loud before people said. Oh, okay. So I've adjusted a little bit. Please let us know. Dave Taylor, welcome, welcome. Coming in from the UK and Michaela. Thank you for joining us. Michaela Weaver coming in from Portugal. Oh, this is thank good. You, this thank is you. Good. Rob. Rob Ringer from the Netherlands. Mm. Volume good. Thanks for the report good. there. Thank you. So we have an amazing route from Austria. Yay. I was going to say Guten Morgen, but it's Guten Afternoon, right? right? <laughs> good. Yeah. How do you say that in German? Guten Abend. Oh, that's evening. Guten. No, Guten Nacht. We, we obviously don't know. That's okay. I lived in Austria for a while. It's got to be Guten Abend. <laughs> okay. Well, afternoon. Guten. Anyways, guten. 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 We are happy for you to join us for Courageous Imagination. Mm -hmm. We are going to just roll out a bit of the, the topic of Courageous Imagination. We want to have your input, your chat right there. Anytime you have a thought, just put it down. Michaela's coming in, whoop, in whoop, as well. Whoop. Welcome, Michaela. And we have four special guests this morning. We have Michaela, a human, human rights activist. activist. I named her that myself. I hope that's a good title for you, Michaela. We'll find out. Uh, we have Dr. James. I didn't name him that. The, he the board is, in he Michigan is our named dentist. Him that. We have Elaine, the artist. This Ooh. will be hard for Elaine to wake up. She doesn't do well in the mornings, but she's given it a go. Coming soon. And we have later coming a little bit later, Dale, who is a therapist. And in the session this afternoon at two o'clock, Saskia, the photographer, will also be with us. But it is like six o'clock in the morning there, and she could not make this one. So I understand that. <laughs> she is a small child and a business. Anyways, Helen is with us as well. Hey, hello, Helen, and thanks for joining us. Oh, David Taylor already has a question. Mr. Question has it up. How has courageous imagination impacted the first three plus months of your year? <laughs> what a great question. That's a great, let's oh, start with that one. David, that's a great Go, question. Go David, we're keeping you. Well, I, I've been thinking about what does courageous imagination actually mean? And, and it, I think it's a skill that moves you forward. Uh, because in your mind, you've already gone there. And for me, there's been so many things in these first three months, four months now 
of the year that we have had to go there before we could go there. And the imagination has actually built within us this courage that this is, no matter what's going on, there are so many days, especially with this whole online stuff, that we look at each other and we say, let's just quit. Let's do something else. <laughs> it's hard. Do hard but things. But there is that skill of imagination that we know we've already been there. We've seen where we're going and we just need to take the courage that God has given us by faith and move forward. So this three months has really been every day a journey into courageous imagination. Yeah, we us. had to imagine what the courses would look like, learning new platforms. We had to have courage to go for it, to not be perfect in it, to just Go and have courage. I think one of the founding stories Dan was talking about the children of, of the Israelites is um, Joshua and Caleb. They were the ones sent early into the promised land to spy out the land and come back and give report. Well, 10 came back with a bad report. They said, no, no, we'll be overtaken. But Joshua and Caleb had courageous imagination mm -hmm. and they could see with God eyes of faith what God was able to do in that space and said, yes, we need to go. And then um, the story of Caleb's life, 50 years later, Joshua is now the leader and Caleb was there and Joshua was asking for volunteers. And it was Caleb who said, I'll continue in courageous imagination, mm -hmm. send me. Yeah, into and this difficult task. Into a difficult task. And for both of us, this is where we have been. This is where we want to continue to be. We don't want to just give up early. We want to still be 50 years later going on the on the strong path for Jesus, going with courageous imagination. Mm. So far, it's been um, 32 years that we've been going, going strong together with courageous imagination. So let me show you where we're at today and what we're looking at. We are looking at Doozy Live Courageous Imagination. And this picture that I saw online just grabbed it for me. There is this Roar. lion and it is it is just, it is in peace. To me, this is not a, a charging lion. This is a lion at peace, but it is ready to move forward. It's got, look at those eyes. It is so set on something into the future. And with courage, it's moving forward. And I don't see that it's moving fast. It's just steadily moving forward. And the verse I was thinking about when when the today was boiling within us was from Deuteronomy 31 6. And this is this is when um Joshua or Moses was handing everything over to Joshua. And he was saying not just to Joshua but to the to the all the children of Israel be strong and, and courageous. courageous. Because just before this in a verse Moses actually tells the people, now listen, God is already gone before you. That's imagination. God is already before you. It's already happened out there in the future because God's been there in the past. So do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. To me, this blows my mind. This is courage. And this is imagination. You can't see God crossing the Jordan in front of you. You can't see him walking around uh, Jericho before you. But the imagination can. And so I love that verse. And here's, I love reading things from Martin Luther King Jr. And this is one of the quotes I love. If you lose hope, somehow you lose the vitality to keep moving. You lose that courage to be that quality that helps you go on in spite of it all. And so today, I, I still have, have a, dream. a dream. The dream is the imagination. The courage is what moves us into that imagination. So with, I'm excited this week. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, it looks like we've got Richard Houston who just popped in as well. And Elaine, you made it awesome from Wisconsin. Um, so Dale Potter is with us and he is going to be joining us later as well. So glad to have all of you with us. Should we start with a poll? Let's start with a poll. Because I think sometimes we assume everyone is on the same page with us, but I need to know where you're at. Are you more on the courage side right now in your life or are you on the imagination side? Which of these two would you say 
is the stronger reality in your life? Which skill are you greater at? Courage, courage or, or imagination? imagination? Please quickly just take that poll. Because we're blending those two together and we're going to walk in in the courage and the imagination. But just go ahead. You see that poll right there? Just choose mm. one. Some of you are saying imagination. Look at my cat in the hat. Some of you are Speaking saying imagination. courage. Well, yep, there we go. We'll give it a couple more minutes. Oh, at the moment, it's just 50-50. Go ahead and pop your pop your um your choice right in there. That's great. Okay. Neck and neck. Neck and neck. And let's see. I'm not sure it's published, so I want to just take a snap of that so I can show oh, you. It's changed again. Oh, it. Okay, 42 well, to 62. Hope it keeps changing. 32. Keep those, keep those what coming. What skill are you greater okay. at, courage or imagination? I would ask all of you, please take a moment and fill out the poll. This is what we've got so far. Courage is 37% Ooh. and imagination is 62%. Nice. Thank you very much. Nice. Just leave that up a few more moments. All right. So when we're thinking about, that's a tough question, David said. Yeah, we like we like to put it out there so you got to make a choice. Um, just want to show you a couple things that we're going to put in there just before we get into our, our interviews. We were talking about courage a number of weeks ago, and this is inside of our, of our uh, flow course. We talked about the six types of courage. And you could have courage in all six of these ways and more, but you could have physical courage. You could have social courage. You could have intellectual courage to engage in ideas, moral courage to do the right thing, emotional courage to feel the full spectrum of emotions, both positive and negative, and spiritual grapple with questions about faith. I love this because God has created us as whole people. And sometimes we just are intellectual or sometimes we're just spiritual. But we need to look at the whole area. How has God made us in all these areas to be people of courage? And I want to I want to share a PDF that I'm, I don't think I'm going to show you the slide of it. But it's how to grow your courageous imagination. So that's up at any time. Go ahead and grab that if that is one of the things that you would like to have. And then we talked another week as well about how to grow your imagination. Well, here are 10 of the top ways study, one of the studies I, I found. Read, daydream, socialize, assist, play, ask, create, share, meditate, yeah. or be mindful, study. So what ways help you grow your imagination? Yeah. And I want to also put that in the files for you to just grab uh, as well. And you can just um, have that for later, or you can go into the, you can go into the flow course and grab that and have some more supporting courses to make that happen for you. So let me tell you what's happening today. I am, I am really, really happy that we are, we're doing something different. Uh, this is something, again, we have imagined this for a long time. Today, we have some guests. And we're going to be interviewing those guests. We're going to find out their story and how in their line of work, they in, in their life as well, they need to have courage and imagination. So each of them are going to have a, a time to tell a little bit of their story. And then uh, towards the, the middle point or a little bit after the midpoint of this webinar, we're going to put all of them on the screen and you're going to be able to ask them questions. We have a dentist, we have a therapist, we have a human right activist, we have an artist, and at 2 o'clock we'll also have a photographer. Okay, so Michaela, so if you don't mind, put your hand going. up and you get ready to come on in. Dr. James, you'll be next. So Michaela, so we'll, we need we'll you get to Michaela in the house. put here. your hand up to speak and then go on inside and we'll wait for you to come on in. We have a lot of people that we are in contact with all the time. When I think of Michaela, I always think, She's the lady that says yes. Yeah. I, I remember the very first time I met her, she was like, Well, I'm I, I just love saying yes. And it was like, <laughs> oh, I love this girl. So we I am looking forward to hear what she has to say about imagination and about courage. Okay, Michaela, I don't see you putting your hand up. So you got to go down to the bottom. There's a hand that says speak. And if you don't mind, go right inside there and 
And Dr. James, if you don't mind, you can put your hand up and be ready just in case that doesn't happen instantly. We want to get you both in there and ready for us. Getting on my desk top. Ah, yes. Thank you, Michaela. She's got a, a little bit of technical difficulties, but we'll get her Dave there. Dave Taylor asks, how would you answer that poll? So would you lean more on the courage side or imagination? Hmm. They're both very vital right now in this season of my life. Um, I think courage. I think courage because um, the imagination is coming, but the thing that I have to gear up for is the imagination or the courage that I have to like do hard things and, and get ready with that courage. For me, it would definitely be imagination. <laughs> imagination is always stronger than courage has to sort of come along and push it forward. Okay, Michaela, you can take your time. Dr. Dr. We'll get, James is we'll on get his the way. Doctor we'll get, in the house we'll get him in first. He's on his way in. And then Elaine, you're going to be after the two of them. So we'll let you know when to go on in. You, oh, so you've good. done it before. So let's pray for success. Woo! Courageous imagination. So you may you may want to write in the chat as someone is talking, maybe a question you have directly for them or on a piece of paper that you'll ask later on. Either one is fine, but we want this to be a day of really engaging with each other what's going on as we move uh, forward. And meanwhile, I don't know if you know, but Dan and I are in the middle of the ABCs of living creatively oh, yeah. on our socials. If you haven't received it, you can send us a message and say, hook me up with it. But you can go on YouTube. We're posting everything on YouTube and also on doozy.com, our website. So you can see the videos, you can see the write-up. Today is F, fail forward. Oh, yeah. So it's good. You're going to see Dan featured doing something that he he usually can try everything, and he go, he's really good at anything and everything. But this particular thing, he had a great demo it needs of more failing, courage. More failing courage. forward and having courage. More courage. All right, Dr. James, are you coming through? Oh, no poll appeared on everybody's screen. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Did everybody get the poll or no? There's people who voted. So just, just curious so. about that. Okay, we got another hand up in the room. Hopefully. Okay, Michaela's on her way in. Dr. James we'll is accept, on his way we'll in. We'll accept whoever right now put that hand up there. So we may have... It looks like you might be a little bit stuck. He should be appearing. Courageous imagination. <laughs> I can imagine him getting in there. Place. Audio feedback, working on a solution. Okay. Good. Okay. So, Michaela, if you want to jump in first, you go she, ahead and jump in. She's on her way. Elaine might be good for you to jump in. You know how to do it. So let's see who gets there first, and we'll take dun, whoever. Dun, 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 the race dun, dun, is on. Dun, dun. Audio feedback. If we put headphones on, if you go on Chrome and put headphones on, that usually works. Elaine's on her way in. Let's wow. see who makes it in first. This is like a horse race. <laughs> it's like running in, running in. It's so cool to have all these people. When we were thinking of courageous imagination, our list was very long of who we could have in. And we thought, ah, let's start with these ones. Yep. And the key here is I've learned <laughs> Do not press the red button. So <laughs> go through the whole process, but there's a red button there. Please don't press the red button. I feel like, what is that? What is it? It's, um, loss. Wasn't it loss where you had to push the red button? Or? <laughs> we do want you to subscribe. You know, every video, subscribe. You can't subscribe right here, but we want you to subscribe. But do not push the red button. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, so we have Elaine. Oh, Elaine, 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 Elaine was the winning, the winning Okay, entry. Elaine's first. The rest of you keep coming. But keep coming. We'll now, Elaine, you. there are two buttons. One is an audio button. One is a <laughs> video button. You have to push one of those. Oh, this is great. We're we're making it. We're making it. When I was when I was looking up up the definitions for courage and imagination, I really found these very That's interesting. That's the microphone. There, there, there we are. are. Good morning. <laughs> are Good we morning. on? Elaine, it's the early morning for you, but thank you for waking up early and joining us. My pleasure. So as you talk, <laughs> probably the other ones will come on. I'm also give them 
access. Here's James coming okay. in right now. Great. Let me give him access. Yeah, just so James, there's there's two more buttons. There's an audio and a video button you can push. Okay, so Elaine, in. we're going to start with you. Thank you yeah, for joining. For there's a couple things we want to ask you. We have identified you as an artist because you are amazing in so many artistic ways. She is a beautiful piano player and worship leader. She is also... She's also a um, fine artist, amazing watercolors and art pieces. And most recently that I, well, not most recently, but I also love, she's a great poetry writer. And besides that, she's a shepherd and lover of people. And so we were just talking about you and, and courageous imagination and being an artist. Yeah. So Elaine, what is it that you do right now in this season of your life? Um, like with the with the quarantines and things like that or before just yeah what did yeah let's say Tell before, you. Quarantine, <laughs> before. <right? laughs> what did your real life look like yeah um i'm a waitress and a bartender at a farm to table restaurant here in town which i absolutely love um just that chance for constant and consistent connections uh being able to be a part of customers lives be a part of my coworkers' lives um so after I came back from my ship time, was able to have about two months of just breathing. Uh, my fiance was here as well. And then, um, yeah, started in with work. And that was a, a true gift for me being able to have that little bit of a routine each week. And then because of that routine helped me figure out some of where my capacity was, especially from a sense of, of people. Uh, and ministry. Otherwise, when I'm not working, um, trying to just take advantage of the time at home and with my family because hopefully in the fall I'll be entering into, um, into marriage. And so being able to transition those worlds a little bit and take advantage of the one that I'm in right now with them, being able to, to value that time, value those moments. Um, so that can look like playing games, that can look like doing, I'm just making food. I like to be Iron Chef when I have the chance just because it's fun and creative and that's where that imagination piece comes in a little bit um, in that area. So just, yeah, now that I'm kind of finding the rhythm of, of life, um, being able to then take advantage of that and be able to build upon that a little bit. So this season actually is very, um, imagination based for me even before quarantine but then also i'm um, taking a lot of courage to see where does my capacity stop and where can i push it so now i know that you're thinking courageous imagination and you just recently wrote a poem i did you any chance have that ready i have ready it right to roll here. out with us <laughs> have it right here. cross your legs while you read it she has this like cross your legs form that makes the poem go so much better <laughs> Great storyteller. Uh, all right, let me find it here. She has this book, Show Your Book. It's also very beautiful. And she almost has it full. She's near yeah, the end of it. We're getting close now. Yeah, this is all that's left. So She's, She is an avid writer and thinker and creative imagination girl. So let's have it. All right. Pure imagination. In the blinking of an eye, in the beating of a heart, nothing becomes something. Wild dreams begin to start. A dusty table, now a canvas, spilt milk, a jumping pool. A flowered meadow is an ocean vast, the sandbox to the brim with castles full. Colors spark an artist's eye, a smell takes but a moment to generate a far off memory so real that one could hold it. In the dark, it does not die, it just might turn to fear. But when the shadows come to light, things might be a bit more clear. What is this thing, this pattern teaser, this idea maker, this wildly creative form? It breathes light into the darkness, thick blacks now bouncing colors, quiet stills to vibrant dances, formless space, now crafted details. It has no voice it seems, yet it speaks so loud in others, commanding mind and body strong with tongue and hands uncovered. It flows as if a river yet leaps it as a bridge it runs for miles far, yet stops, breathing stilled. 
can such a power be so real? Can a thing so truly be? It contradicts and goes beyond the things that seem reality. However, though, and never quite the less, it's true. It's real. It lives in you and me. As varied as the human heart and the mind to which it's paired, it creates and dreams so many things, such things beyond compare. It's so unique to me, just as it is to you. Don't fear it, dreamer. Grasp it, love it, free it. You'll never guess how far it takes you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We'd love to hear some responses in the chat. And we'll have Elaine come back up at the end again. Yeah, and we sure. might pick your brain. But, wow, well, I absolutely, those poems are amazing. But it might take like 10 more times to like get the depth of it. I have <laughs> one of her poems that I keep with me in my journal all the time because it's so encouraging. I can't wait for your oh. first book to come out. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working, Elaine, on it. working on a book. Yeah, stick with us, Elaine. Um, we're going to have you back in just a little bit. Thank sure. you so much for sharing it. Yeah. Uh, we have Dr. James in the house. We're going to highlight you. Turn on your audio. There you go. There you go. Hey, welcome. This is my this is my baby brother, James, who's six feet how many tall? Can you hear okay? Can you hear us? Okay. Can you hear me okay? I can, can hear I? you. Can you hear us? Okay, great. How it's it's not, he's not really the baby brother. He's just can you next, hear me? next in the line. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. I, I, okay, I think he cannot I can hear, hear you, but there's quite a lag. Oh, yeah. I think it's eight seconds, so you're okay. Tell us, tell us about courageous imagination and your work. Eight seconds. Okay, don't talk. I'm going to talk. You don't talk. <laughs> Go for it. Is my audio coming along with what I'm doing? Yeah, you're good. Okay. All right, this is Dr. Okay. James. Okay, um, Susan. He might be frozen. We're waiting. We're waiting patiently. Elaine, while we're waiting, your audio is still on. Just shut off your audio. Can oh, hear sure. Sure thing. Just shut off your audio. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. I don't know if we got Dr. James in the house. We see him. Oh, oh he, he left, left the room. The room. Okay. Down. Michaela's on her way in again. We'll take whoever wins in there again. Elaine, while we're waiting a little bit. Yeah, uh, you've got, you've got, you said you've got um, a nice fiance and we know him. <laughs> and he is awesome, but he sort of got stuck in the midst of this. Yeah. How are you guys dealing with courageous imagination and him being stuck there um, in that space with you? For he's from South Africa, so yes. yeah, he is. So it's it's been a huge gift uh, for us being able to have a longer period of time to be able to actually like learn how to do normal life uh, in the same place. And so we just chose. Um, we spent some time with my grandparents first, and just had this really nice. Um, transition back after the the chaos of the whole flights change. Um, but then we put together, I drew out a calendar, was able to be a little creative with that, as well as um, putting uh, some goals on there. We planned out five specific uh, strategic goals and then had about 30 to 40 uh, intentional practices to be able to apply those goals. And so it allowed us to have uh, a sense of creativity and also imagine like what would we like to do, what we what would we like to see happen um, individually and uh, together during this time, but then also be able to, uh, yeah, build off of that and then leave some room for flexibility and and just go for it. So 
That's good. Awesome. Yeah, you yeah. definitely need creative imagination for that moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Michaela's in the yeah, house. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Put, Hello. Yeah, there you go. Audio on. We're going go awesome. to Michaela. We're going to highlight you for a moment. Michaela, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Now, you're here as an OM USA intern in what department? And tell us a little bit about what you're doing, Michaela. Yeah, so I work for uh, Operation Mobilization under a ministry called the Freedom Challenge. And it involves a group of women that come together um, and do a few different things. One is raising money to do you know, like triathlons, how people do um, 5Ks, things like that. But instead of 5Ks, we climb mountains. <laughs> so the Freedom it started out Freedom Climb, now it's the Freedom Challenge. Um, because it's pushed past mountains, there's bike rides, there's just hikes, things like that. Um, but it's a group of women that come together, that raise money then, and then the funds we raise after we accomplish this challenge goes towards OM, uh, Operation Mobilization Ministries across the globe that help fight and support um, people that are working for human fighting human trafficking. So... Yeah, it's a it's this cool community of women that come together, finding freedom for ourselves, pushing our limits uh, physically, and then all that money goes and goes towards fighting human trafficking. And is this just in America you're doing this, or is this around the world? Around the world, so we have an array from Africa to Eastern Europe to Europe to uh, Asia, just all around. We have different ministries that we've supported and I've had the pleasure of going to Moldova and support and see that ministry, wow. uh, which is an incredible ministry there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Michaela, you're the one who really, um, in our courageous imagination theme of this year, when we were having life group together, our next gen life group sitting there, you said, yes, I always try to say yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, okay, I think it's greatest displayed when I was in college, even kind of in high school, I would, I ended up having just a suitcase, like a little bag of to go bag <laughs> of uh, extra change of clothes, toothbrush, um, everything that you kind of need to on the go, because it tended to just be we would be out and then a two day trip would become a three day trip would become a four day trip would be <laughs> if if everything allowed it i we did just random little trips up the coast of california um it just always just seemed like i would plan one thing and it would end up being a week full of festivities so <laughs> always being prepared and ready to go but beyond that um just Yes, a yes to even coming out here. I'm from California, so to first time living on the other side of the United States. Um, just when God presents something and it seems uh, able to accomplish, if all the requirements are met and I can do it, I'll say yes. So. Oh, that's good. And what is one area in your life right now that you really think, I need courageous imagination? Currently, right now, um, one for the Freedom Challenge, going from it's really about climbing mountains and being together with a group of women. So what does it look like to connect with them here presently um, during the virtual work and stuff? So we're actually kind of thinking about what does it look like? We have a challenge that's happening in May, but what was going to happen? We're probably going to cancel it. And what does it look like to do a virtual challenge? challenge so that's going to be interesting and fun to wow. come up with whether or not that's something working out online and so we actually tomorrow are really um, going to imagine what that could possibly look like mm. and try to tackle that and let it be something really special um, but then beyond that yeah in this specific time not being with people and then I think there's a lot of creative uh, courageous imagination and what my next steps are I'll only be here for the next year 2020 so getting to look at courageously stepping into whatever God has planned for me after yeah. <laughs> and that takes a lot of courageous yeah. imagination it's interesting <laughs> what you say as well because sometimes we have the imagination we take courage and then the world changes and, and we need <laughs> mm -hmm. new imagination. So it's sort of like courage, courage, imagination, courage, imagination. And we'll talk about yeah. that more in a little bit. 
Yeah, so good. Any other thoughts on courageous imagination for us? Um, not that come to mind, per se. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see who else is in the house here. I think uh, Dale Potter. Oh, James is joining the room as well. Okay, and James let's is Let's see here. if we can get Dr. James see in again. Get Thank in, you, Michaela. Stick with us. See which one James comes is in. trying again. Uh, Dale Potter. Oh, James is joining the room. Okay, there you go. And James Let's is see here. if we can get Dr. James see in again. Get Thank in, you, Michaela. In stick with us. See which one James is in. trying to get. Dale Potter. Michaela, oh, you need to shut here. off your audio. Thank you. Can you hear me on this? Yes. Looks like Dr. James is right okay, here. In you are. You're okay. on. He's. I he's, can't hear you too well, but I'm going to go for it again. Sorry, I'm having lots of trouble. Okay, so we were left off with the process. Uh, one of my heroes, David and Goliath. My name is James David, named after that David. Um, he had courageous imagination. So if you read through First Samuel 17, he said to the king. I have killed a lion, I have killed a bear, I will kill this giant. And so you could see that in his mind, that he could do it. And before it ever happened, he had courageous imagination that he would take this giant down. through a little system i never really lined it out this way until susie and danny asked me to do this so i put together this little thing susie will hopefully make this available to you uh the creative process so i like to call it i i g g l f or i i g g e e so it's easy to remember so what it stands for is identify what exactly is the need or the want and this is one place I think we really get hung up when we're doing creative imagination. So there's, there it is. Susie's got it. So if we don't identify clearly what it is that we're after, we're really going to get hung up here and not being able to fulfill our uh, desires to be creative. The second I stands for imagine, what we're talking about, imagination. And we need to use imagination to see the solution or the final product or service. So in my business, I'm thinking of products in terms of how I'm helping educate my staff. Uh, I'm seeing services as how I'm helping better take care of my patients. Um, but I have to use imagination and I have to sometimes be creative in that because my staff go, ah, oh, it's not going to work. I don't think that'll work. I think we should just continue on with the way we've been doing it. So courageously you have to push forward and say, no, I think that if we made this change, things would be better for us. So the G stands for go. And I think we really get hung up here too. At least I do. Uh, we got these great ideas, 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 ideas. I'm imagining things. And we need to just go and start the process. And if we start the process, then we can get the job moving. The second G stands for grow. And Dan and Susie were just referring to this, that as they're moving along, they're changing things. Things are dynamic. Our audio doesn't work. We just have to keep moving. So in process, we course correct and improve the creation as we're doing that. The last part, LF or E, stands for learn slash future or evaluate. And I think this is a really important part of courageous imagination. When we go through a process, we need to stop at the end and say, how'd I do? Did it come out as I expected? Uh, what did I learn through this process? And what should I do different in the future to make it better? Did I get the result that I was seeing in my mind when I was an imagining that. When David pulled the sword out of David's or Goliath's sheep, he knew this was going to happen. He had already seen it. He cut his head off and said, this is exactly how I saw it. 
And so he had a great um, vision and imagination towards that, but then he followed through at the end and said, now we move forward and because of this, we can do whatever else we're moving around. So one more quick example, a couple days ago, I produced a video for my staff because I wanna implement a new protocol. We're gonna use some peroxide pre-procedural rinse. And so I've been talking about this, thinking about this, trying to do this about four or five years. Going to do this. I've got some COVID downtime. I'm going to make <laughs> myself do this. So I sat there, went through the process, hit go, and started that. It flowed much easier. So for me, a lot of times I have the imagination, I have it visualized, but I have to be courageous to start. I got. Mm. I have to stop being or not. it there. I hope you guys have heard all this. And if you haven't, more <laughs> questions coming. Uh, I'll turn it back to you guys, Dan and Suze. Thanks, James. Okay, thank you. I mean, look at there. Just like not so long ago, and he comes up with this I I G G E or L F. It is in the downloadable section. If any of you want to download what he was I just mean, speaking about, I'll to turn have it that. Back to you guys, Dan and Suze. Thanks, James. Okay, thank you. Okay. I mean, and I also there, just like. Not so long ago, and he comes up with this I I G G E or L F. It Somebody is in has the audio download on. section. <laughs> if any of you want to download yeah. what he was okay. just speaking about, to have that. Thanks, James. Okay, I, thank you. I love the way and Dr. James was like, talking about. So ago, you, don't, you don't, you don't just like imagine it. You've got to get it out there. And then he also had an evaluation learning moment. Fear, what's going on here? Oh, he's back in there. Okay. Yeah, I love the way James, he shut off it. your audio. Just for now. And the other thing that Dr. James said the other week when we were um, when we were together, I think it was last week, he was talking about he has he he sees his patients' X-rays in two D, but then he has to three D imagine it and then go into the mouth. That was really um, mind boggling for me. I love that. And then he's taking us another step further, further with, don't just imagine it, do something with it. So thank you so much. The last person we're going to be looking at today, the story is my brother, uh, the therapist, Dale, would you come on? I think you just need to have your, yep. I think you're all ready. I think I'm on. Dale all Potter. Right. If, if Good you can, morning. if you can aim your, your screen just a little bit so we can see higher on your head because we have all these little squares on your chin the other way, the other way. There yeah, we there, we there we go. Now we can see it. So, Dale, tell us how, as a therapist, Excellent. you need courageous imagination in your line of work and as you're helping others. Well, fine. Oh, yeah, Dr. Seuss. But can you see what it says? Oh, the places you'll go. Yep. Right now, we're kind of in a suspended animation. Let's put it that way. And um, we don't know, you know, when this thing's going to end. Um, and so people kind of feel trapped. They feel uh, lost. And my goal is just to help them realize that there is a tomorrow. You know, we may feel like there's not, but there is a tomorrow. And because there's a tomorrow, we can dream, we can imagine the possibilities. We don't have to be trapped in this box forever. We're, we're going to be able to, to move forward. And now is a great time to just recharge and get ready to move forward. It's just a matter of getting people to realize that, you know what, this is temporary. It's not future it's only temporary and now is the best time to plan for what's going to happen after this and that's all happens up here it's all cerebral it's all imagination it's all of that processing is to get to be able to ready to move forward does that so make you, sense 
Yeah, are you doing all of your therapy now through the internet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're not allowed to see anybody face to face. Uh, we haven't been for about three weeks. Yeah. And who are you working with? Uh, kids and families. Um, my kids all range from age 10 to 16, 17, um, and their families. Yeah. And how, how are you finding, how are you helping those people have courageous imagination? As you're, as you're working with them, you're going from fear to more faith. You're going, you know, for forward momentum. How do you do that? It's just a matter of trying to inspire them to realize that that this is only temporary. Mm. You know, it's okay. Take this time of downtime to refresh. You know, this is a time that's based, uh, there's so much fear right now. There's so much anxiety right now. Um, but we have to learn to look beyond that. You know, the fear of the unknown is so powerful. You know, and it builds that anxiety because anxiety is really the fear of the unknown. Yeah. And so many of, of the people that I work with have anxiety issues, you know, which which in kids can lead to not only depression, but hyperactivity and all those type of things. OK. And what they have to see is is it's okay. We're going to move forward. They have a lot of fears about, okay, am I going to move on in high in school? Am I going to, uh, is things ever going to be back to normal? Uh, you know, is my family going to be safe? Is anybody going to get the virus and on and on and on. And what they have to realize is you're okay. Mm. It feels, but don't always trust your feelings. Trust mm. facts. And yeah. facts are, is this thing is only temporary. Mm. If you trust the facts, then you realize, yeah, I can, I can. So it takes, it takes a lot of, of creative thinking, creative processing to be able to realize that, yeah, even though I feel stuck right now, I'm not. That's I don't good. have to be. There is a tomorrow. That's good. Thank you, Dale. We'll bring everybody back into the room. We've got some questions coming along here. I, I love this. This I, one. I'm going to start with one. Um, David's got us humming with questions. So any of you, if you just see the questions in the chat and you want to speak into that, you're free to just answer that question. Otherwise, I'll read it out. The first and, question. Wait, one second. And also be listening. If, if you hear feedback, shut off your mic. But if you don't, just leave it on. Yeah. Uh, this is a question for each of us. What is the thing, habit, rhythm that helps you most with courageous imagination? We'd love to hear from every one of you on that on that question right there. So Elaine, maybe you go first. Michaela, James, sure. and Dale. Let's go in that order. Um, I would say for me with the, the habit or the rhythm, um, might be more of a of a partnership of different types of things. It also semi depends on what am I trying to imagine? What am I working on? Because with being an artist in different areas, sometimes depending on what I'm being artistic in or imagining in, then has its own set of rhythms. Um, for example, yesterday I'm, I was trying to work on some of my piano, my piano skills. And so I just was asking everybody in the house, like, hey, pick a number between you know, zero and eight, 815, because that's um, how many songs were in the hymnal. And so they picked a number and I figured out how to play that one if I did <laughs> or I was like recreating based off of that. And so that's nice. one way I can kind of imagine. And then they're able to actually be a part of that habit finding and that rhythm piece. In other times, it's especially when I'm writing poetry, I need to be in a quiet spot. Uh, that it, it can only take sometimes maybe 10 to 30 minutes to write a poem, but as long as I've created a space that is quiet and is peaceful, it allows those thoughts to kind of go in their different orders um, and then create themselves as I'm writing. Normally I get the first two lines down in my head, whether I'm making something in the kitchen, I'm running around the house, and then the rest comes out um, once I sit down. Oh, good. So I heard you talking about community around you inspires yeah. your creativity. For and sure. And then you also talked about location. 
an environment set up for it. Awesome. Yeah. Kayla, what yeah. about you? Yeah, I think the tack on to that community piece, I think one thing for me is you can create it in your mind and you have these ideas, but that courageous go for it piece kind of stops when, if I don't tell anybody about it, if I just, oh, I've thought about it. But it, once I tell somebody about it, it's like, all right, somebody has me accountable. Somebody knows about it. Somebody encourages me to go to do it. Um, and then I think the the other thing too is is a lot of times we can look at the negative. Oh, how could this go wrong? Like, if I were to stick my head out and do this, how how is this going to fail? But I think the other part that I'm seeing is. Oh, but what could go right and what could actually be really, really beneficial in this time? And what can we pull out from that and changing that mindset as to, okay, something can go right here rather than just everything going wrong. So I think those are two things. That I have. Nice. Community and the yes mentality. It's going to go right. <laughs> Love Good. that. Dr. James. Dr. James, what habit rhythm makes, um, helps you with the courageous imagination? James, turn on your audio. <laughs> we see him speaking, but we do not hear him. James, turn on your audio. Can't hear your, yeah. Uh... There you go, hey. there you go. Hey, Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm having a very bad lag to nothing. I came to the office to get better internet. Didn't work. <laughs> Any case, the thing that's not working um, is my imagination of how this is going to end <laughs> and everybody can hear me. So in any case, uh, courageous imagination stops when I'm afraid because I don't have courage anymore. So at this point, we have to be courageous and not be afraid. But um, seriously, the things that uh, the other ladies had talked about were, you know, not being in the right place at the right time, having some other things out of the way, being able to focus. Because I think part of creativity is really having our mind clear to be able to focus on what it is that we're trying to be creative with. So for me, um, having a lot of distractions really takes away from my courageous imagination. So that's yeah. important for me is to get things done that have to be done, get them out of the way, get the distractions out of the way, and here we go. Yeah, distractions for sure. Thanks. Yeah, so fear mm -hmm. stops you, but getting the distractions out of the way gives you a passageway for courageous imagination. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dale, how would you answer this? You know, I just wrote something down as I was listening to everybody speak, and I want to share it. Imagination is living in the moment, being fully mindful, but dreaming not of, but into the future. Hmm. Okay? It, that into, that active thing, not hmm. not of, you know, I, I it's, it's, it's almost like a plan, you know, that dreaming into the future. But, you know, it's living in the moment. It's being mindful and realizing that, that this too will pass. And this, is, this can actually be a very good time for us if we take advantage of it. It's that downtime. It's that peace. It's, it's that fuel, if you will, that we will need into the future that's good i'm sorry i talk with my hands that's all right yeah that's well right. you have them use yeah. them <laughs> that's good that's so great I, I, just wanted the to, I just also want to invite anyone else who's who's watching this if you have some questions you can ask us a, a question specifically to one of these four or a general question that any of them could answer Here's another question that came up a little bit earlier. Yeah. David is asking, what is the role of rest 
in courageous imagination. Dale slightly spoke of that. We have this downtime right now, and this is allowing people to imagine things that they never were able to imagine before. Dr. Dr. James, he created a new um, protocol for something in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, that was I pretty technical there, wasn't it? <laughs> rest, rest cannot be overemphasized. Take advantage of it. Yeah. That's good. But I, I think it's also different types of rest. Um, you can have physical rest, but you can also have multi, like emotional, mental, and spiritual rest. And so it's finding ways to partner those that then can help launch your imagination or your courage in a different way. I don't necessarily need physical rest in order to write a poem, but I need to have mental and spiritual rest um, from a sense of playing piano. I can't have physical rest, <laughs> but I need to have that, again, that spiritual or emotional space to be able to then put those two pieces into the music that I'm working on playing. And so I think depending on what you're either finding courage in or courageously being willing to set aside the time and the space to rest, because it can be odd to go like, hey, I need to... I need to pull away in this area in order to be able to do something else well. And that takes courage to be able to either say no or to switch your focus. And so I think it yeah, depends on what type of rest you're, you're looking at for your imagination. Yeah, I had a, one other thing when I was thinking about courageous imagination. I kind of had this picture of a bridge of, so like, say your imagination is dreaming up this island off of the mainland and then courageous imagination is okay what do i need how do i get there how do i create the bridge how do i form it how do i get from this mainland over there how is it so it's secure you know this cra uh, courageous imaginative architect of creating from one to the next so it's not only just oh i'm dreaming up that there's an island there and that it has endless possibilities but that courageous like you're saying like going how do i actually create the bridge to get there and that takes a lot of planning that takes a lot of recognizing what would work what wouldn't work and then having the bridge to get over there and to walk it and have it be back and forth so mm -hmm. i had that picture when i was thinking of courageous imagination mm -hmm. Bridge to the island. I'm an I I love the sun and the fun in the sun. That sounds amazing. Let's go there. I when she when they were talking, I wrote down this that uh, I think that is so applicable. Uh, we've been taught that rest equals being lazy, ah. when in reality, rest equals fuel. Mm. That's good. That's Can you good. type that in the space too? That's good, yep. Dale. James, how does rest fit into your work in life? Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, rest, very, very important. Um, if you don't get the rest you need, you're not gonna perform well. And if you're not performing well, you are not gonna be creative, period. So imagination um, for me, particularly comes in the times that I'm feeling good, I'm well rested, I'm in an environment that makes me feel happy, uh, then I'm most creative. Um, you can do some work, it's like cramming for a final exam in college. You can stay up all night and pull an all-nighter and you'll learn a few things. It, it does work, but it sure isn't a very productive way to go. <laughs> and probably we forget way more that way than if we just were well rested. So rest is definitely critical. And the more rested you are without being over rested, uh, I think the more creative we can be. And then our emotions are in check to be courageous and not fearful too. So we can be more courageous while we're being uh, imaginative. So we can do creative processes that glorify God. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you hit on a few things. When I'm thinking of imagination, the imagination is so vital. It's part of the creative process. And I believe the courageous, the steps. So just having the imagination doesn't get you there. You do have to be courageous to go for it. And 
um, some of our key verses for courageous imagination are like, be strong and courageous, Joshua 1, 9. And then also Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. God wants to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Or imagine. Or imagine according to his power within us. So we have to imagine it with that faith, but then we've got to take the steps to make it happen. And I, that's why we love the two combos of the, the concepts together. Courage and imagination, the creative process, faith, walking with God, all these things that you guys are talking about. Um, love how you've come from your specific angles and personalities and your sphere of influence that God has given you. I would like to ask a question to all of you that were interviewing, but also those of you who are in the chat. What do you need courageous imagination for today? What What is something that you are sitting there? If you're, if you're in the chat, I'd love you just to write it in there. But those of you who are uh, spotlighted here, I would love to hear when you think of it's always going to be about the future and you you need some courage as you move into this part of imagination for you really practical what is it in any of you can answer in whatever order what do you need courageous imagination for today um i think for me it would be um like one particularly practical one is just as the dollar signs are changing from a sense of right now I'm not working, um, had been planning to be working. <laughs> so, uh, and then as I, as Rihanna and I prepare for hopefully our wedding in the fall, realizing that as the dollar signs now are shifting, then it means we might have to adjust things courageously and also imaginatively for the <laughs> fall and what does the what can the wedding actually look like now um and so there's some practical that way something that has been on my mind but trying to figure out how to put into action has been um, more writing so i i have the poems and those are already written so those those i can literally just put into a book but also I, I enjoy writing, I get fuel off of writing, but I know it's a way to be able to bless and to encourage and to influence. And so I know it that in this season, that's something that I need to be courageous about in order to step forward into that, but also need to imagine how can I really sit down and start it as well as launch it to an audience that it's gonna be helpful for. Nice, thank you. Who in the chat is interested in Elaine's book? Say, just give a little indication. <laughs> We're, we can't wait for it to roll out. We've heard a lot of the poems already. It's so good. Audio deal. Yep, I got it. You guys <laughs> have just inspired me to, to think and to, to uh, type thoughts while people are talking. And I just wrote, Nothing man has ever discovered, invented, created, or found uh, is possible. There could be no sense of awe or wonder. Nothing could or would even have been found without creative imagination. That's good. Keep writing, Dale. It's good. It's good. It's good. Keep it going there. Michaela, what do you need courageous imagination for? Well, I think one thing as I as I think about the freedom challenge and Elena kind of brought up this finance piece, and that's one of the biggest things with the freedom challenge is we fundraise money, and the the money that we fundraise goes to our projects, and so we've heard a lot of people really concerned about, okay, how am I going to participate in this event and raise money if everybody's like question on a dollar sign <laughs> and so that creative i think because i think in this time and i totally understand that there are a lot of unknowns but then just the nature of what i do with um, i mean human trafficking doesn't stop because coronavirus came in and halted everybody else's life and there there are just things that just don't stop because of this and so it's that how do I creatively and us as a team creatively imagine and courageously imagine to go and to provide spaces for people? And it's not going to be us that take allow their hearts to really buy in in this time. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. But how do we um, give tips 
gifts and um, abilities to still fundraise, to still, so their hearts are still in it, still raising the money, um, still wanting to be involved and participate and recognize that there are other things still happening in, the, in this world that's not just the coronavirus. And so getting to how do I, how do we creatively and courageously imagine ways to fundraise, ways to get people to still buy in because there's a lot of of tough things that are still going on in the world. So I think that, and again, just going back to what does it look like to have a challenge or things like that. So yeah, um, I, I think just creating spaces to where people are like, oh yeah, there's more than just this going on and I can buy in and um, fundraise creatively because that's always fun too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things that we're learning in the process of rolling out our courses, uh, many of the people who are training us, we can't ever do what we're doing for the dollar sign. It, it has to come from right. the passion within. It has to come from who we agree mm -hmm. to be in the rollout of our being. And I think that's a very right. important piece to remember for all of us in this season that, yeah, mm -hmm. of course, money and we need food and we need basic things to live but in the process what what is God wiring us to be and do and this courageous mm -hmm. imagination to carry on doing that even with limited resources for example our first our very first main street <laughs> in Europe was 56 people and we had this small room with a grand piano and we had a gym that's all we had and we had to creatively imagine what to no do with that. No budget at all. No budget, zero budget. For the first number of years, we had zero budget for Teen Street. And yet we could creatively imagine. The second year, we had this conference center, which was like a warehouse. But the people before us were coming in and making an oasis and pools and no, it's, grassy it, this, areas. This warehouse this is where the they had ships. And they had this huge pool in the center of the auditorium where they had put ships on display. And, and so we were guaranteed that we would have this water and everything would be based. So we, we thought, let's go with- Palm trees, let's oasis. Let's go with Noah because of this. And then we arrived at the site. And we arrived at the site and it was a construction site. That's all we had. No water. There was nothing. no water, no grass, no sand. It no was budget. Like, it was like, um, what do you call them? Scaffolding. Scaffolding was up everywhere. And so we went into creative imagination. We had one day and we had some extremely creative people with us. We went from garden to junkyard, the whole <laughs> set. Look, we actually had people go to the junkyard, pick up things. Someone picked up a, a car and we cut it, cut in, it half, in half. And that was where we did the interview. It was just, we had to go to that new place. It was, honestly, it was our very favorite set of all the 16 years that we mm. did in Germany. but. It was like we had people hanging from the rafters doing their part and games from the top and then sitting on top. We had a drum, a drum solo all over the car. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. And we could have just said, oh, no, but we had courageous imagination to use whatever we had and to go for it. And those moments are something that just continues to inspire me. Like we don't have to have this and this and this you know, definitely to be able to go in the direction God has for us. We're all so uniquely wired to be creative and have that imagination that he gives inside of us. So yeah, let's do it. I'm in here. Okay. Cheryl says, courage to wait and imagine all of our loved ones staying well and healthy and imagine all of us together again in the near future. Yeah. 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 And also just in these times, we've heard of a number of people that we know and love who have passed away in these days and they've died alone in a hospital and their loved ones died alone and they can't have the gathering to grieve and mourn. Um, so we do have to have courage and imagination to, to know how to support people who are, who are struggling and others who are thriving in this moment of, you know, like mandatory uh, coronavirus and even, season. Even in the midst of some of our fears, we need to listen to voices like what Dale was saying. There is a, a tomorrow. There is a tomorrow coming. And sometimes even if we ourselves can't imagine that, we can't have the courage. This is why community is important, that we we talk the reality 
of our courageous imagination out there so other people can catch it. Yeah. I think courageous imagination is highly contagious. Yeah. Let's be contagious in our places and spaces. Anybody else have a thought? Well, I was just going to add on to that. Yeah, I think sometimes we worry about this confinement, but like with all the teen street stuff, it was these limits that actually spurred this. Okay, how do we work with? And then the, those are the things that you remember the most. Like even my birthday all alone here is one of my favorite birthdays because I was creative in, in how I spent it. So it's just, it's those funny things that, yeah, sometimes it is times like this where we do actually get the most creative and things that last not only in this time, but that can go on to when things get back to normal, hopefully yeah. soon. <laughs> April 4th was our son Josiah's birthday, and we were planning on going out there. We had to cancel our flight. Then Josiah was planning on going to our other son Joshua's house and having a campfire and staying, you know, the, the six feet away and a whole bit. They had to cancel that because of some things going on. So they ended up playing Catan, Settlers of Catan, and, and my Two one locations. son had theirs on their table, and my other son had his on his table, and they had two computers set up, and they played all night. And I was like, that's imagination. That's courage that we're not going to let this stop us. We're going to move forward. Yeah. Oh, Melly is here from Albania. Thank you for joining us, Melly. Hey, Melly. <laughs> That's where I get more courageous imaginations in the moments of running out of materials or budget and being limited, being challenged with that brings more imaginations. Yeah. And, and thinking outside of the box. Yeah. And Dale says creative imagination takes the ability to take what you have, the mundane, the common, unex the expected, and discover or see it as not the normal thing we expect it to be, but what it could be and become. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we are given this gift um, uh, of our ABCs of creativity. E is expose yourself to new experiences. And this coronavirus season and this lockdown is definitely a new experience for probably all of us. <laughs> everyone maybe, maybe not quite everyone but unprecedented like, yeah so ha, it's a new experience for us so we don't have to be limited by that we can use this new situation to just ask god to show us how can what can we do in the moments of these times i think one of the things i find very interesting is um we're trying to just put our make ourselves available for people anybody who needs support you need a chat you need coaching you need to hang and we have had some of the more in-depth moments during coronavirus because people have the time, the available time, and you know they're putting it forward. They're they're like identifying needs and desires, and they're just going for it. And so I think that's a blessing of this added time for us, and hopefully for you guys as well. Yeah. So we have another one of these uh, exactly like this, except totally different at two o'clock. <laughs> Just wanted to throw this out for anyone who is watching that uh, we're going to go round two, probably a little different questions, even a little different format. So I invite you back uh, at two o'clock for those of you who are able to do that. And it's not two o'clock for everybody, Tim. Four Eastern. more hours. In four four hours. more hours. Whoever's, whoever's on, we'd love to have you come back and join. All of our guests that we've had here will will come back again Saskia with, will also more, join. with more power and Saskia the photographer will also join and we are so looking forward to it James I know you're you're still in the room there I don't know if you can pop on or if you're there you are <laughs> oh thanks for having me on sorry I could not <laughs> Well, be courageous, be imaginative, be creative. Now that's that's creative, ima courageous imagination. We got gotcha. you. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank all of you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. I think we are living at a time where we can't be the island. We have to open up and build those bridges, yeah. step across and listen to what other people are saying. Uh, live off of those days. There are days for all of us that we bottom out. And on those days where it's like, will the wedding happen? 
will I ever get back to California? Will I, will I, whatever? We need to have other voices that speak their courage and imagination into us. And I believe together we need to move through this. And uh, it's just like it's talking to Dr. James, just calling some of his people back to work and just we're going to get back on track after two weeks of not knowing, come in the office. And, and so those kind of things, I think I would say to all of us on those days where you really, really have courageous imagination, talk to people, talk to people, let that be the contagious thing that we're sharing. Be salt and light and hope. Yeah. Any last words from any of our magnificent spotlighted people? Magnificent. Magnificent. Ooh, that's a good word. <laughs> Just thanks for uh, allowing us to share. And um, I hope that people are encouraged, you know, to, to think outside the box, to dream, to imagine again, not to feel stuck. Yeah. Just let you all know, that's my brother. And the reason I think all the time is because I grew up with him. <laughs> He made me think all the time. <laughs> and and this is my brother, James, the dentist, and he also made me think all the time. We have our two thinking people, our, our sparks of thoughts. Melly says, thank you for being courageous imagination people that encourage us to live fully alive and give glory to God with all our lives. That That's a beautiful statement, Melly. Yeah. Anything else? Ruth says, thank you for the encouragement and the laughs. And Dale says, anxiety is or comes from unknown. We have the power to choose how we how to respond to it. That's because of the courage, courageous imagination. Great. And Elaine and Michaela say, thanks for having me. Again, thank you for, for being on. Um, I just love to explore the subject from your unique perspectives. Human rights activist, Michaela. Artist and many other things, Elaine. Dale, the therapist, Dan and Susie, the doozy, and Dr. James, the dentist. It's been so rich to just get your perspective. And we honestly look forward to another go at it in four hours. So we've gone for an hour and 16 minutes. If anyone needs to write anything more in the chat, or if any of you need to say anything else, we're going to give you the last words, <laughs> and then we're going to close this time. Yeah, and this, for those of you who have registered and are watching this, the replay will be available shortly if you want to see any of the parts of it later. Again, thanks for joining us for Courageous Imagination Doozy Live. Anything, <laughs> ladies? Nope, all good. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Anything else, Dale? We'll nope, we're good. Thanks. <laughs> we'll see you all soon. Thank you. It's been a very rich experience. See you guys. I got to get rid of you all first. I press the red button. I press the red button. I press the red button. Goodbye, Bye. everyone. Press the red button. <laughs>